This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Also brought to you by Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to. And yes, this is our Christmas special episode. Every year we like to do a review that has a special message to it. Because as an online reviewer, clearly my understanding of life is better than yours. It won't be obvious at first, but it might just sneak up on you and have a connection to the movie we're reviewing. Critic! Sugar Plum here and I are having a fight. I'm sorry, Chainsaw Hand. It's just the holidays make me grumpy. Well, the holidays shouldn't make you grumpy. <laughs> now, now, you two. I have a feeling we'll all figure out something important about ourselves within the next half hour. I just have a strong feeling about it. I don't know. I still am grumpy. Oh, you are just like an animal people would make a meme about. I'm sure they'll figure out they're both right in their own unique way. Anyway, let's get to what we're reviewing today. I know it's gonna sound weird, but I try not to make jokes about other people who make their living online as entertainers. I know I've let some fly, and I have no problem with those who do, it's fair game. But it just seems odd mocking someone's repetitive comedic gimmicks with my own repetitive comedic gimmicks. I feel like we're all in a similar boat, so I try not to rock it too much. With that said, this is a cat. I'm gonna make fun of a fucking cat. Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever was a Lifetime original movie released in 2014. Going viral in 2012 because her unique look caused by feline dwarfism, Grumpy Cat went the way most memes went, being funny at first but being used to death both figuratively and probably literally. With the film's hashtag, Worst Christmas Ever, trending for the first half of the film's premiere. When the people using it ironically inevitably put together, Wait a minute, they WANT us to do this! Panned pretty hard by both critics and audiences, the film is seen as one of the original memesploitation vehicles. In short, Grumpy Cat Christmas walks so Karen could run. With the director of both Alvin and the Chipmunks and Garfield, a tale of two kitties attached. <coughs> could this be the new beloved classic that replaces a Christmas story being shown for 24 hours? Well, seeing how it's the guy who did Garfield too, I'm hoping there's at least an erotic crossover to scar kids on Christmas Day. Let's not waste any time, let's see what happens when the tears of the internet mix with the tears of quote-unquote television for women. This is... Ritik, these two are ruining the holiday! I told you my name is not a commentary on your sexual performance! Yeah, he lasts much longer! What? What? Gotta go. I'm so grumpy! I can't wait to see how this all ties together. This is Grumpy Cat's worst Christmas ever. You'll need to remind me, it'll feel like a lifetime watching this. Figures the movie begins with a definition, seeing how most people watching may not know simple words. As the credits roll, the movie makes it clear very early on what you're in for. Just look at what song they start off with. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Because you know, cats. You might be treated to high speed car chases. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want an authentic crappy internet meme movie? You can't argue that's not what you're getting. No joke, most of Grumpy Cat in this movie is her being held awkwardly, awkwardly being green screened, replaced with an awkward puppet, or her clearly trying to sleep while someone awkwardly wakes her up. Deck the halls, deck me in the face. And to the movie's credit, it's owning its laziness. It's like they started as a forgettable Christmas rom-com with everyone just going through the motions and then halfway through they were like, Wait a minute, we're shit. Why are we even trying? Let's just do whatever the hell we want. Honestly, that is kind of the story. 
Aubrey Plaza signed on to play Grumpy Cat, and when she discovered the cat's mouth doesn't move in the movie, she decided to improvise most of her dialogue. The director said, sure, we're shit, we don't care, and half the movie is just her trolling. A good chunk of the time, she's pointing out how bad the film you're watching is. Time to meet our awful movie's heroine. A hero who saves the world and who doesn't look like a puppet. Stop making me dance. God, this is already annoying. Are you still here? You are? Why? Those guys didn't do anything to you, did they? That's a different kind of Lifetime movie. So you might be thinking, oh my god, does this actually work? I know none of you are thinking that. Some of these jokes are legit good, but they keep being interrupted by random shots of Grumpy Cat just doing whatever because they clearly shot a lot of B-roll footage of her and had no idea what to do with it. And even a troll who practically makes a living doing quiet, crazy shit nobody understands can't always make it work over and over and over. I'll also say, as much as I respect someone trying to save and destroy their movie simultaneously, she's not really the voice I imagine for Grumpy Cat. She sounds too young. Looking at that face, I always imagine her sounding like that 10-pack-a-day lunch lady who unintentionally taught you new slurs. Oh my god, Timmy, or Kimmy, or whatever shit. We have to save Christmas or Easter or whichever day I don't celebrate. Hey, hand me that beer can I've been ashing into. It's my son's birthday, and I'm gonna tell him it's a puppy. A mall. It's a soul-sucking bastion of consumerism. I think she's just reading the back of the box now. Grumpy Cat lives in a mall pet store where, of course, the other animals talk. Gotta love how they stop the film to introduce each one of them, even though pretty much none of them do a damn thing in the rest of the movie. I'm cuter! A plus I chew chair legs! I'm well-bred and well-read. Check out this spin class of one, ladies! I apologize, Disney December review of Underdog. I didn't know this is what we could have got. Freddie James Marston Highmore shows up saying he's gonna close down the pet shop if the rent isn't paid on time. You see this cat? I plan to make her the most famous internet meme of all time. Orchid, show me set. Now show me danger. Just like that. We shot footage of a grumpy cat photo shoot. What should we do with Use it? Use it, I care not how. Maybe if we write in, she'll become a meme. Use or... it, just stop interrupting my lunch. Did I say yet it's possible to be too meta? A thousand products, everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs. After that, TV appearances. Maybe a lifetime movie. So I'll admit, there is an irony that a self-aware character with too much content is mocking a self-aware character with too much content. So I'm just gonna do what any self-aware character with too much content does. Create more self-aware content. Please welcome MetaDog! Hello, Nostalgia Critic. Hello, MetaDog. I'm not a dog, I'm a puppet. Oh, of course you are. So what wacky fourth wall antics do you? You don't have to talk to my hand. You can look at me in the face. Why, I guess I could puppeteer. Ayana. Ayana? Not going with the character name there? You know it's Ayana. Okay, Ayana. Critic, you won't believe what he- Did you get to the sappy emotional arc yet? No. We were in the setup phase. You should fast forward to where the nostalgia critic gives an overly dramatic speech. Okay, time to go, Meta Dog. It'll probably have a double meaning, which he thinks is subtle. Hey! He does do that a lot. Yeah, like, I wonder what he's talking about now. Okay, she doesn't need any help from you. Hey. Thanks, Meta Dog. Yeah, you saved us like 20 minutes! Hey, we have the afternoon to ourselves. Let's go. Ooh, afternoon selves! Oh, that was a fucking fine introduction. I think it's time to go. I just do what's in the script. It's in the script. Okay, I'm out. Shit, I gotta see if there's a Sainsbury Christmas commercial I can rip off. So rather than turn Grumpy Cat into a meme, they instead decide this random dog is worth millions. Don't question it, the movie doesn't. Actually, it does, it just doesn't care. He's worth a million dollars. Whoops. Shut the front door. Shut the back door, too. Shut all the doors. A million? Really? Just look at him. He's worth... You should really be paying me to look at him. No, honestly, this movie is random with its fourth wall jokes. There she is, look at her. <laughs> with second billing behind me, Aubrey Plaza as Grumpy Cat. Insert Michael Sarah grabbing your microphone, that joke could've worked. Seriously, honestly, don't do stop. This is Crystal, some 40-year-old man's idea of how kids are, and she's visiting her mother, Tabby. Santa and I are not on speaking terms right now. What, why? Sweat shop. Wow, this is the worst version of Elf I've seen since Elf. It's here, you remember? Oh yeah, it's supposed to be a story to this. Fear not, there's more random meta. Blah, 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 B story, not my line, not my line, not my line. Meow. Okay, Plaza is voicing this in between a drunk stream. 
You can't see it, but she's got a webcam, a flask of Jameson's, and her grumpy cast grip she's occasionally glancing down at and spitting on. Don't be angry at her, she's multitasking. Tell me this line deserves all her attention. Dude, are you ever gonna eat that sandwich? Mmm, is that turkey? You can't, she clearly has other things not to care about. Her mother agrees to go to Jessie's party while Crystal is accosted by Mean Girls. Yeah, cause she looks like a dork. Do we look like a bunch of nerds? <laughs> what a dork. As if we actually need to get smarter. You know, movies like this are what happens when I let my mom be my agent. We cut to Zach and Donnie, two characters so unfunny even Grumpy Cat can't make a joke about them. No one shreds killer bass solos the way I do. <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. That's sad when a character's act who's all about not trying doesn't even try at not trying. Who are looking for a place to rob when they discover the non-celebrity celebrity dog. Wow, that Judging Dennis Leary meme has not aged gracefully. Well, that sounded like the way to the world. I'm shooting a creepy Kirk Cameron movie next door. What shit you in? Where's your Christmas spirit? Some people are mean for no reason. You know you're in a movie with a character who is mean for no reason, right? Luckily, people like you get special compensation from people like me. That's a magical Christmas coin. I have more in my soundproof van. Have a cookie. What do you say, Crystal? How did you know my name? Let's just say your name's on the list. For my Christmas wish... Let me just grab my Christmas chloroform. She makes a wish for a new best friend, and wouldn't you know it, now she can understand Grumpy Cat. He's beautiful, isn't he? Beautiful? Pfft. On what planet? Planet ugly? Meow. Did I really just hear someone translate meow with meow? One of my favorite moments is the pet store owner goes into this random tragic backstory about why he keeps the place. And like many things in this movie, it's never brought up again. I have neglected this place, but it's only because I've been in so much pain. Ugh, I'm in so much pain listening to your sob story, I wish you'd put me to sleep. Okay, it's legit hard to tell when this film is trying to be sincere or satirical. And again, I don't think the movie gives a shit. There really is a limit, though, to how many fourth wall jokes you can do. I haven't seen you put a cap on it. Oh, piss off, Metadog. I already had to find another emotional story because of your bullshit. Isn't that right, Mr. Snyder? That's right, Critic. I just can't figure out how to work Jared Leto into my Army of the Dead Christmas. You know Zack Snyder doesn't look or sound like that. Wow. My life is a lie. God damn it, that's too hard you fucked up! Don't worry, you'll find another self-indulgent way to be our savior. We get out of here! Again, you're the one who wrote me, so... I chose to do this for a living, I chose to do this for a living. Crystal acknowledges she's hearing Grumpy Cat, so she picks her up and puts her a few feet away. How's this movie's equivalent of an action sequence? I tossed a magic coin into a wishing wall and made a wish. Okay, I'm embarrassed for you. Hey, look at the freak having a conversation with a little kitty. Jesus, you appear like ghosts! You need your own sting music! Look at the freak having a conversation with a little kitty. <laughs> yeah, girls who hang out in pet stores are losers. You're all in a pet store! When she tries to ask the mall Santa what's going on, she finds he was... the real Santa? Do you know the Santa from the Westbrook Mall? Westbrook closed a while ago. She's dumb. Cut, next scene. Uh, you sure you don't want to do a take two Grumpy on that? Grumpy cat movie. Okay, set up the next shot. Later at Jessie's party, Tabby is asked which lame Christmas gay gift she like. The fruitcake! Oh. <laughs> well, I'm surprised. I thought she'd go with the Grumpy Cat calendar. Come to me, Crystal. You are powerless to resist me. Meow. <laughs> You tell me what I'm supposed to do with that. I guess her seance worked as Crystal goes to the mall to try and see her again, but Donnie and Zach are also there trying to break in. Why are the Cinnabon employees always the last to leave? Because they're up all night making those delicious sticky buns. Oh. Ah, that topical Cinnabon humor. Just put the check in the car. They tape up the security guard, and Crystal tries to figure out how they can suddenly understand each other. We really need to figure this talking thing out. It's worth pointing out, you really screwed up your big wish. I sense another cutaway joke. Actually, I'm not. I'm just guessing randomly because they pop up randomly. Here we go. Another Mademoiselle Grumpy Cat? Oui, oui. Just keep them coming until I pass out. We shot that for a Chicken of the Sea commercial, but they traded us for standards, so here we are. The crooks sneak into the pet shop. Crystal finds an amazing hiding spot. <laughs> and it looks 
looks like they're trying to steal the dog that's quote unquote worth millions. Again, the film points out why it's horse shit and makes it clear they could call the cops, but they don't for lazy reasons. But that would mean a pretty short movie and a lot less advertising revenues. Hi, I'm Aubrey Plaza. We're so meta, I'm riffing my riff of the movie. Obnoxiously clever or cleverly obnoxious. I clearly peaked with Parks and Rec. It went like this. They left their keys. Crystal convinces Grumpy Cat they of course have to save the dog themselves and wins her over when she has a vision of what will happen if the pet store closes and she's sent to a shelter. Don't worry, it's not going to hurt. This is way too dark. No! Jesus Christ! Granted, I did pray we would see this in the movie, but I didn't think the film cared so little they would just let this fly. Why wasn't this the ad for the Christmas special? Hey kids, do you love Grumpy Cat? Watch her die! Tuesday at 9. Anyway, the two of them home alone the criminals with a bunch of wacky stunts. Most of it is pretty pedestrian, it doesn't stand out. It is except for one image. This has to be the moment when the creators were like they're never gonna say no. Lifetime is never gonna say no to anything we suggest. I also give credit that as hard as this image is clearly trying to become a meme, the internet didn't take the bait and refused to give it attention. Damn it, humanity! So sorry to interrupt, we may be taking some creative license with what actually happened here. Hi, Aubrey Plaza again, interrupting this riff with my riff. Hello, Heather Roos here, riffing my riff of Aubrey Plaza riffing her riff. Hello, Ayanna Wade as Metadog, I'm here to riff on Heather's riff of Aubrey's riff of- Oh, it doesn't matter, none of you are gonna check and see if we worded it right. God damn it, knock it off, Meta, Ayanna! Say, I just figured out that- Your daughter's still a 30-year-old who dresses like a little girl? Well, that ruined the magic. You know what, fine, I'm using a foolproof character to have an emotional story around. Get in there, Bill! Mm -hmm. Let's see, you ruined that one. Do people know Bill's the finger puppet and not the man holding him? This was my coming out party. Oh Christ, I need a break from you. I'm cutting to commercial. You gonna stare unnaturally long at the camera while it fades to black? No. I'm a snowman. I can't move. And I'm always cold. It's terrible being a snowman, but not as bad as giving too much to your internet service provider. If you haven't been using ExpressVPN every time you've gone online this year, yes, I may be permanently frozen. It's its own unique punishment, but that's nothing compared to the enormous internet bill you pay every month. Every time you go online without ExpressVPN, your provider, like AT&T or Verizon, can see and log every single website that you visit. And yes, that includes all the sites you visit in incognito mode. My nose can smell nothing but carrot. I'm so sick of smelling carrots. But think on top of overcharging you, they're also legally allowed to sell you all your browsing activity to third-party advertisers for massive profits. Your internet service provider, not carrots. I have nothing against carrots except their smell drives me insane. I've gone insane, but not insane enough to stop giving to my internet service provider. That's why I always go online using ExpressVPN. The app encrypts and reroutes 100% of my network data through their secure servers, so my provider can't see a thing. It couldn't be easier to use too. Simply fire up ExpressVPN on any of your service providers, phone, laptop, whatever, tap one button to connect, and that's it. Unlike your internet service provider, ExpressVPN is committed to your privacy. Their privacy policy has even been audited by third parties so you can rest assured that your data is not being logged by anyone. My arms are twigs! They're twigs! But you could be suffering more, for you've given enough to your ISP this year. It's time for you to start taking, so take back your internet privacy today with the VPN rated number one by Tech Radar and Mashable. Visit expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic and get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash nostalgiacritic. Go to expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic to learn more. All I taste is stones.
What I wouldn't give for Green Chef. What is Green Chef? I'm so glad you asked. Just look at the smile on my face that I can't stop giving. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. It makes cooking easy so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home cooked meals. Green Chef offers 35 nutritious and flavorful options to choose from every week, featuring premium, clean ingredients that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness. I can't blink. Green Chef's options for every lifestyle includes keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. If I could taste anything but stone, I would say that because it's so healthy and tastes delicious, it results in my personal favorite combination. Healthy, delicious, and not tasting like stones. It helps you eat more balanced meals and offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. And right now there's a special offer if I could open my mouth and go, yay, I would! But I'm cursed. Just go to greenchef.com slash nostalgia10 and use the code nostalgia10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash nostalgia10 and use the code nostalgia10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Why are you talking to me? I'm a snowman! So the guy collecting rent earlier arrives in the middle of the night and the crooks think he's the one sabotaging them. I'll look the other way! I never saw anything! You guys were never here! I won't tell anyone you were making a Grumpy Cat movie! <laughs> Who'd even believe me? Crystal releases the security guard and they rush to get help, comfortably stroll to get help. My dad left my mom for a barista. He barely calls anymore. Last time he did, he said they were talking about getting married and starting their own family. Divorce can be tough. Movie, don't try to be about something. You're barely passing as a movie. I will admit, this movie has a twist I legit did not see coming. I thought you said they took your phone. Oh, yeah. We can call the police now, right? We're not calling the police, Crystal. La 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 Yes, the security guard is the brains behind everything, and he let the crooks tape him up to fool the cameras. Why does he want the dog? All I needed was enough money for a down payment on a house before when I retire next month. That's both boringly practical and practically boring, but I'd much rather listen to his finances than the rest of the story. A worst Christmas what the fuck? goes to... Oh, yeah, forgot the scene was going on. At the party, they give the worst Christmas sweater award to a guy named Alejandro. Because I know you were all waiting for that. Life is like a soft taco. This is already aging great. If you dig inside, you find the strength to stand tall. Meow, yo quiero taco guy. Only 17 years behind on that reference, but honestly, I'm just thankful you're not showing a Slowpoke Rodriguez cartoon at this point. The crooks capture Crystal and the guard reveals his evil plan, which he already did. He's gonna pay me a lot of money to get that stupid dog back. Me, enforcing the law, but the whole time, all I was thinking about was breaking it. So while I did predict the scene would happen, I will admit, I thought I'd be with the mall Santa from earlier. Mastermind. Oh uh, no, yeah, you're, you're a limp short of being Kaiser Soze. Yeah, that popular kids movie every child knows. I mean, come on, this was made for children, right? Or as Lifetime likes to call them, women. If something bad were to happen to the little guy. First of all, I'm a she. Why is that so hard to grasp? At this point, I wonder if even the movie knew she wasn't a boy. Would you be surprised? They literally interrupt this quote-unquote suspenseful scene with an out-of-nowhere ad. Grumpy Cat Golf Balls, or the Grumpy Cat Dartboard. And for the ladies, a surefire hit, Grumpy Underwear. Christ, that's better than a chastity belt. You going down on a woman, you see that? You are not going any further! They give us a really convincing fake out where the bad guys win the day like a morbid silent film melodrama. So glad they let the director of Annette take over. I'll hand it to this actress. She clearly wanted another job after this movie. What's Tom gonna do? I can't change anything, especially people. 
All right, we need you to cry for this Grumpy Cat movie. But the only way I can do that is thinking of my dead grandma who was murdered on my birthday. Pull that out for Grumpy Cat. You want me to think of my murdered grandma? If you don't also want to think about your murdered grandpa, then yes. I also laugh at this clearly overdubbed scene that was added in just to make the moment a little meaner. Stupidly even thought that George was my friend. Nope, never was. See? Maybe if this wasn't Grumpy Cat and instead, fuck you, Salamander, these jokes would have worked a little better. Grumpy Cat gets free and helps her escape so she can grab the phone and call her mom. George and those two other morons are trying to steal JoJo. He's a really expensive dog. I came back to see Grumpy because she can talk to me. Who is this? We then cut Welcome to... Welcome back to Cat Ventures of the Serengeti. We're on safari. You shot footage of her in a hat. It does not need to be in the movie! Tim, what kind of music did you imagine for the scene where the child is driving a cop scooter in a mall with a feline internet meme in her basket? Pure thrill. I will also admit this bit of grumpy cat driving got a chuckle. How is this even possible? You can't even reach the pedal. Thanks. It's no getting the gas scene, but I did snicker. Crystal takes over driving and it looks like they're gonna go crashing through the door. Huh. I guess Lifetime didn't have the budget for we it. We had every intention of shattering that. Unfortunately, we didn't have the budget for cool. it. Cool! I get to live with I have the same sense of humor as Grumpy Cat. They get out of the mall and thwart the bad guys just as Tabby and Jesse show up. Grumpy Cat's puppet is flung into the tree, causing Crystal not to understand her anymore. No, really, kid. It's okay to try less. Grumpy! No, 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 please! You're my only friend. I need you to say something, anything! Okay, the first award for giving a shit when nobody demanded it goes to you. Of course, Grumpy Cat was just fooling and they can still understand each other. When Christmas rolls around though, Crystal is sad she didn't get what she wanted. The mother surprises her though with Grumpy Cat as it looks like they adopted her. Looks like Santa brought me a present too. Does she mean the coffee or the elf? <laughs> Good one, Grumpy. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, right. Was that the real Santa or just a magical perv? Make your Christmas wish and old Saint Nick will... Beat it, Tubbs. Guess it surprisingly wouldn't change much if I do anyway. <clears throat> Tamara, what's wrong? Nothing. I just... I didn't get many lines in this episode. Aw, oh, jeez. I didn't even think about that. It's okay. I know you're busy. No, really. Uh, let me explain myself. You know... Sometimes around the Christmas season, we get so focused on what we think is important that we lose track of what really is. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. No, it is. Everyone here works so hard at what they do, and I really want to make sure everybody has the most comfortable holiday possible. Is there anything I can do to make up for this? No. Being teleported to the doorway off screen is demeaning. I'm out of here. No, Tamara, wait! You know I'm never shot next to anybody because of scheduling conflicts. That's it. You have ruined my Christmas special with all your meta bullshit. Well, now I'm gonna bring in the king of meta bullshit! Get in here! Ha! Hey, Jim. Hey, Ayana. Well, I guess I ruined that bit. Hey, critic. Hi, Brad. The illusion is ruined! Okay, I gotta cut my losses and wrap this up. Grumpy Cat's worst Christmas ever, as you'd expect, is very bad, but sometimes it is cleverly bad. I forget for as often as this guy makes bad movies, when he gets a funny performer, he will let them improvise. Plaza's improv combined with the warring tones of family-friendly schmaltz and mean-spirited cynicism almost gives the flick a kitschy John Waters charm. But it's only for part of it. The rest is annoying, unfunny, babyish, and advertising itself so hard that even their mocking of it doesn't suck out the shamefulness of it. I give it credit for being the exact type of bad a film like this promises, and for even trying to go a step further with its self-aware tackiness. But yes, there is such a thing as being too self-aware, and it kills a lot of the goodwill this film surprisingly started to build up. I like meta humor as much as the next person, but that doesn't mean you still can't get too much of a good thing. Or even a bad thing in this case. 
Speaking of which, I don't know how to stop this meta monster I've created. Are we supposed to act like there aren't cameras filming us? All I want was a nice Christmas message, but now all I can think about is how I'm gonna be in your reverse shot when we shoot you the next day. I'm just challenging you to do something different, Doug. It's Crick! It's Doug. Do, 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 no! do, do, do. You know that song doesn't really annoy you. Come on, man, don't ruin the bit. You're the one writing this, you're the one ruining it. I just wanted a nice Christmas message. You already said that. You repeat yourself too much. I... The most meta way to beat this is to just stop. This whole video should stop. Why are you still editing this? I said stop. Guess I wrote myself into a corner here. I, I really do want to get across a nice Christmas message, you know. It's just I've been doing this for so long, it's kind of hard to do something that's, that's unexpected. But I guess that's kind of the idea. I wanted the Christmas message to be something unexpected, you know, like it's the little things, the things you don't think about that can go a long way. It doesn't have to be something big and grand, uh, but, but I don't really know how to get that across with uh, just a couple seconds left. Uh. Okay, that works. By the way, my dad really wanted to be in the Christmas episode, and because we're so meta, here he is. Hi. Bye. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. And once again, I just got back from a convention. So that means the charity is once again, the Center for Victims of Torture. And uh, for those who don't know, whenever I go to a con, whenever uh, we do pictures, you know, like take a picture with me, uh, I charge money that goes to this charity. And whenever somebody asks, oh, what charity is it going to? I always know I'm gonna bring the mood down when I say the name of it, but it, is really all the more reason why you should donate to it. I mean, it's one of those things, it's a harsh, terrible reality, but it's something that, you know, you can help with. You can help people who have gone through this. It has a four-star rating on Charity Navigator. It's such a wonderful, wonderful charity. And if you want to know more about it, please click on the link. And I know it's difficult, but when you see the good these people do in helping those that have gone through, I mean, quite honestly, the worst stuff you can imagine. I mean, that's just the worst thing. Uh, it really does help you know, just feel better knowing there's so many good people out there that do stuff like this that are always willing to help. So just trust me, this is a wonderful, wonderful charity to give to. Please consider either donating or spreading the word about the good that uh, people like this do. And I'll see you next time. Take care.